Good day everyone. Welcome to Prayer Watch. Thank you for being with us today. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we praise you and we worship you today. We thank you for another day that you have made. Indeed, O oh God, you are so good to us and your love endures forever. Father, we come to you once again because we confess that we need you and we desire you above all. We ask that as we look into your word, your word that is life, we will meet you there. We will hear your voice. We will receive your message, Lord, and we will feel your love for us. Help us, Lord, to have tender hearts, sharp minds, and willing souls to receive your word with gratitude and joy. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
John 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. We praise God for his wonderful words of life and love. May I ask you to think of what it is that can possibly give you joy. Kagalakan. What to you is joy? What if someone were to come up to you and say that he could give you joy, complete joy? I believe joy is among the greatest of human desires, if not the greatest. Whatever good thing we hope for or work for, it is because in the end we want to experience the joy it brings. But there are a lot of joy stealers in our world. For instance, sickness, financial troubles, conflicts, pressures at work or school or in the family, bad decisions, failures, disappointments, and of course, death of loved ones. To counter this, some apply stress relievers like stress eating, stress shopping, stress sleeping, entertainment, vacationing, and the like. This may serve people well, but the problem is that this alone will not bring the kind of joy that we are seeking. It is at best momentary relief or happiness. Some are wiser and will probably analyze their situation and seek professional help uh, or even attend to the ways that they can solve their problems, make some lifestyle changes. This is very good and will most likely be useful in the medium and even in the long term if this is sustained. But there is something even better than this. And this is what Jesus says he is able to give his disciples. That is complete joy. Lubos na kagalakan. Don't we want that? Don't we all desire that? But we will see later on that it comes at a price. Just a bit of a backgrounder of the context of Jesus' words in John 15, which we have read in verses 9 to 11. It appears this is part of a long discourse on the night of the last Passover meal that Jesus shared with his 12 disciples. The atmosphere must have been very tense, very sad. He had been saying his goodbyes, and naturally the disciples already felt grief over the impending separation from their beloved master, considering Additionally, the, the circumstances in which he would die. There was the fear in the uncertainties of the future without him. Perhaps even fear for their own lives because they were his followers. Who knows if they would suffer the same fate? Could they have felt some disillusionment that, after all, their hopes for a better life and nation has not come about or it hasn't materialized, but then now their Messiah would be leaving them. They probably felt they weren't prepared for this. Jesus himself faced no small troubles. He was hounded by the ire of spiritual leaders for almost all of the three years of his ministry. 
He had just been betrayed by a friend and a disciple. He would be separated from his loved ones and disciples. He knew he would meet a painful death, not only physically, but even more painful is the spiritual experience that he probably uh, knew would come to him because he would be receiving the punishment for the sins of the world. And yet, in the midst of all these, Jesus preached joy. As he was surrounded by otherwise all of these joy stealers, he did not lose his joy. And uh, he wanted to be able to not only encourage his disciples for that moment, he wanted to teach them a lesson for a lifetime. So let us take note that it was not because he was burden free or that he was pain free or that he was devoid of any emotion of sadness that Jesus was able to maintain his joy. We know that he knew what it was to be sad, to be grieved. He deeply grieved and mourned over Lazarus' death. He wept. Jesus was angered when he saw the desecration of the temple by the money changers. It was not because he had a carefree life that Jesus had abiding joy. In fact, he was about to carry the weight of the punishment for the sins of humanity. So, where did Jesus find his joy? How did he keep his joy? Let us look into his words in verses 9 to 11 because he made it clear that he wants, he wanted his disciples and he wants us today to have his kind of joy, the joy that is complete. So what was Jesus' secret to joy? There are basically two important things he teaches about having complete joy. Jesus' complete joy can be ours by remaining in his love and by being rooted in his commands. What does it mean to remain in Jesus' love? Remember always that God already showed his love for you, so stay in that love. Even when you are in trouble, when you begin to doubt whether God truly loves you, when you begin to entertain resentment perhaps towards God because you think he has failed you, remind yourself of John 3.16. For God so loved the world, and that includes you, that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Remind yourself of what Jesus said about his death on the cross. Greater love has no man, no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Those who put their faith in him are his friends. And it is for them that he offered his life on the cross. So take the Father and the Son's declaration of love for you. Take it with faith in faith. Because they had shown it on the cross. It is by faith, but it is also by proof. It is by experience. It is by reason. Remain in the assurance of that love. You know, we are able to believe people's words when they say they love us. And we are also able to keep on clinging to this professions of love. We want to believe and uh, we keep on believing. So why can't we believe God's words? When you are in trouble, consider what Jesus went through. 
God loved the Son, yet the Father ordained that he be sent to the cross to offer his life for the salvation of the world. God saw it fit for him to suffer and die for our sins. Was that a sign of God's God the Father's lack of love for the Son? Did Jesus doubt the Father's love for him? No. On the contrary, he always experienced it. He said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. He always spoke of his closeness to the Father, to death. Even as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not question God's love for him. But rather, he asked whether it might be possible for him not to go through the cross as a means of saving humanity. But in the end, he said with a surrender to the Father's will in love, so that he could say, yet not as I will, but as you will. In the same way, do not think that your suffering is an indication that God does not really love you or that he has stopped loving you or that he is loving you less. God's word is true and he is faithful. God loved the son so much that he gave him the authority to give eternal life. But at the same time, God sent the son to suffer in order to accomplish his salvation plan. And so sometimes um, we, we mistakenly you know, accuse God of uh, not being true to his word or to his promise. But when those times come around, let us remember how he loved the Son and how he nevertheless allowed him, even ordained him to go through all that trouble. But as you know, the cross was not the end of Jesus' life. Resurrection followed on the third day, ascension back to the glory of the Father in heaven after 40 days. And in his appointed time, Jesus will come again to rule the world in perfect peace, in perfect prosperity, in perfect justice. So remain in the love of Jesus Christ that was poured out to you when God chose you to become his child and when Jesus saved you from your sins because of your faith in him. Now the second aspect of remaining in Jesus' love is the second point of this joy that is complete. And that is to root yourself in God's commands. Or simply put, obey His commands. By now we should realize that we cannot get away from the command to obey. If we want peace, obey. If we want to mature, obey. If we want to prosper, obey. If we, don't, if we want to have complete joy, obey. Don't be double-minded, says James in his book, chapter 1, particularly in verse 8. Whenever we ask for wisdom, we seek the scriptures and God leads us through his word. Obey what he says. If you don't, then that is being double-minded. Seeking but not obeying. It's, it's as if, it's like this. You ask God for his advice and instruction, but when he gives it and it doesn't sit well with you, you either obey only in part or you ignore it altogether. James says, a person who is like that is unstable in what he does and should not expect to receive anything 
from the Lord. So I believe that anything includes joy. Do not expect joy from the Lord if you are not willing to obey. Obedience gives the Christian the sure-footedness in his steps. It is obedience that gives the Christian confidence in his decisions and peace in his actions. Time and again, the Bible says that the proof of our love for God is obedience. As his children and his creatures, that's the definition and that is the expression of our love for him. Because really, how else can we show our love for God when there is nothing that we can give the Creator who owns everything? There is nothing we can give Him except our obedience. He is the lawgiver and we are the law observer. Because love is a giving of oneself to another. To another person for another person's good then therefore when we say we love God we give of ourselves to God for his glory to summarize complete joy is found in the father and the son's love for us and our obedience to them My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe those of you who are secure in God's love and really mean to obey Him are experiencing this joy. It is the joy that Jesus had, that His disciples had, that the Apostle Paul had, that so many of those who have gone before us attest to despite the tribulations and the hardships and the sufferings that they had to endure as followers of Jesus. Complete joy is the sense of security and the experience of inner peace and contentment in knowing that in times of ease or pain, trouble or triumph, until our last breath, God loves us and is working out His wonderful plan and purpose for our lives. May we receive that joy in our hearts today and always. Jesus Christ is the one who makes possible that complete joy. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Praise you, Lord, indeed. Praise you, Lord God, our Father in heaven. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your love that makes it possible for us to experience that much sought after joy that this world cannot bring. Thank you, Lord, because. Your love for us and our love for you is already victory. Thank you, Father, for giving us this true and divine perspective of love and joy. Thank you, Lord, for being so kind, so loving to us that we are able to overcome the world of sadness, the world that is imperfect, the world that otherwise could bring us so much grief. Thank you, Lord, indeed, that there is so much to be joyful for, and that is in your love. Thank you, Lord, for defining what true joy is. Thank you, Lord, that we can truly experience this in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, and even in our bodies. Thank you, Lord, that your joy is our strength. 
in every sense of the word. Father, we lift up to you those who are right now in the midst of grief, pain, trouble, need, confusion, and everything, Lord, that can really rob them of their joy. Father, I pray for those who are Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, that they may cling to your words that you have given us today, because that is true. You have proven it, and we have proven it at some points in our lives. Truly, Lord, if we look back to all those times that we have experienced being down and out, what truly lifted us up is knowing that you love us. What lifted us up is your embrace, the embrace that we feel or we have felt in our minds, in our hearts, and even in our very situation. Lord, we also pray for those who do not yet know you, those who are yet just getting to know you, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, those who have just first heard about salvation by faith in you. We pray, O oh God, for every sorrowing heart, for every grieving spirit, not to just simply seek joy, but to seek you, Lord God, and there find you, find the joy that only you can bring. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this day, and thank you once again, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. May truly the joy of the Lord be your strength now and always.